PlayStation 5 Pro is realizing the next-gen promise. It's totally a bigger jump than what we saw with the PlayStation 4 to the PS4 Pro. I got my hands on an early copy uh, thanks to Sony. We also got one for the team because I really like this machine. It feels good to not be punished again for going for the higher frame rate performance modes. Almost all the games I tested on the PS5 Pro stay true to the elevator pitch of the machine. The quality modes and the performance modes are now combined. But it actually goes much further than that, because developers really seem free to choose in how they utilize the extra power of the machine. Like in Star Wars Outlaws, Ubisoft basically removed the choice from the settings menu. There are no graphics options anymore, just one way to play the game. Which is yes, in 60 FPS and with the graphics that are comparable to the 30 FPS quality mode on PS5. Like you took a pretty noticeable graphical downgrade when going for the performance mode, making the whole game less sharp and blurry which was not the case in the quality modes but on ps5 pro you have the best of both worlds just in time for some of the big changes the developers are promising for the game also rise of the ronin an action focused game you of course want to play in 60 fps had totally a better and more realistic looking quality mode even though overall the game is of course not a looker but yeah you guessed it now you don't have to choose anymore as you can really get the quality mode graphics but with the 60 fps like i put the quality mode and the ps5 pro performance mode next to each other and you see that it's basically the same so that totally makes rise of the ronin more pleasant to look at and sometimes the performance mode on the ps5 pro is actually better looking than the quality mode on the ps5 which is the case for jedi survivor it's mostly the character model that just looks way better on ps5 pro especially if you play the game on quality mode like damn Yes, Jedi Survivor also keeps the regular performance and quality modes, but just improves both of them. But more noticeable are the overall performance improvements. Like while they did improve it since launch, riding on a mount in the town in Kobo is still far from flawless on the base PS5 thanks to regular frame drops. Well now on PS5 Pro, I have no issues with this anymore. And also cool is that the reflections on water for example are now way better in the performance mode on PS5 Pro versus the regular mode on the base PS5. Like it's a pretty big upgrade overall. Another game with PS5 Pro enhancements that I wanted to check out is Dragon's Dogma 2 because even in some spots that game had trouble holding the 30 FPS on the base PS5. Well on PS5 Pro the game does not only seem to look better in certain spots, it also can achieve achieve a higher frame rate when in the performance mode and having the variable frame rate on. And even if you don't plan on going back to Dragon's Dogma 2, this is still interesting because many upcoming Capcom games including Monster Hunter Wilds and Resident Evil 9 will be using this same RE engine that on the base PS5 seems to be stuck at 30 fps but with the ps5 pro enhancements there is a high chance we can at least reach the 40 or higher the ps5 pro also solves a big issue with final fantasy 7 rebirth that will also come in handy when we play the third game on the ps5 as well on the PS5 Pro, they added a brand new versatility graphics mode that basically gives you the visuals of the PS5 quality mode, but with the higher frame rate. While on the base PS5, if you want to play the game in 60 FPS, you have to play in a washed out, muddy looking performance mode. It is not the quality mode with 60 FPS because in some instances it still removes the NPCs on the street that you would see in that quality mode. But apart from that, it's a huge step up from the performance mode on PS5. Now let's look at a title that we will soon return to for DLC. Of course, if you like the video so far, leave a like, that would really help me out. Yes, then I'm talking about Hogwarts Legacy. A definitive edition is coming in 2025 with some pretty substantial DLC. So I'm happy that it got some pretty significant PS5 Pro improvements. Sony already really promoted the ray tracing fidelity mode. And yes, we went to these locations with that same mode on the regular PS5. And you totally see that the ray tracing has improved resulting in more realistic reflections but also outside the Hogwarts walls you see some big improvements in the quality and sharpness of the environments in the fidelity mode it's a pretty big upgrade I mostly played on the regular performance mode though and you totally notice some improvements in quality there as well if you have a 120 Hertz monitor they can of course also play Hogwarts Legacy with a higher frame rate this was also possible on the base PS5 but now the graphics of this mode have been slightly improved on PS5 Pro in Stellar Blade 
we now also find this higher frame rate mode, but this one is new and exclusive to the PS5 Pro if you use one of the new Pro modes that they added. One of the modes is simply called Pro and this is the 40 FPS balanced mode but with the updated graphics and the cool thing is that you can play this in 80 FPS if you have a 120 Hz display. Otherwise the Pro Max is the better option because this is the higher frame rate option but basically with really sharp graphics from the game's quality mode. The YouTube compression doesn't do it justice. I'm really impressed by the PS5 Pro version of Stellar Blade. It's one of the best games I tried. But real quick, if you love to go back to older games, then it's nice to know that there's also a new enhanced image quality for PS4 games setting that you can enable in the screen and video settings. I tried Assassin's Creed Odyssey and tell me if you see any differences. I don't see any. Digital Foundry tried this mode a bit more and you totally notice some improvements, but it's very minimal, like this is not the reason to get the machine. There are also some games on the PS5 Pro enhanced list that do not have a lot of improvements, like Assassin's Creed Mirage. The game keeps the regular graphics modes that the base PS5 had as well, but it's really hard to tell the differences in these comparisons between the performance mode on the regular PS5 and on the PS5 Pro. Now while playing I got the feeling that Basim's character model looked a bit sharper overall but again it's kind of stretching it a bit it's not really that impactful it's also because the quality and performance mode in that game were already pretty close so then you don't notice much of a change on PS5 Pro. Same by the way for God of War Ragnarok you get the same graphics modes but in terms of fidelity nothing really changes even when turning on the 120 Hz mode the graphics are still kind of the same in my experience. Like the machine is totally not for everyone. What I'm seeing right now is that it's mostly for those current gen only games that had trouble reaching the 60 FPS or did so by significantly reducing the fidelity in the performance modes. Now those games are way better on PlayStation 5 Pro. And really these titles have mostly launched in the last 12 to 16 months and we will only get more of these in the last 4 years of this PS5 generation. Like I don't really care about amazing games looking even better, even though they're some of my favorite games of all time. But I do know I'll be spending hundreds of hours across games that make huge sacrifices to reach the higher frame rate. So if you like me care about that stuff, then I think it's worth considering at least. Of course look at how often you use your PS5 since you got it and the upcoming games that you plan to play on it. If that's a lot, then I think selling your base model and then spending the extra $350 or $400 is worth it. I've been all digital during the whole PS5 generation so the fact that there's no disk drive does not bother me that much. But yeah, if you have most of your games on disk then yeah you will need it of course to play those games with higher fidelity and the fact that there's of course no vertical stand included also sucks i wish those things would just come in the box you do get a two terabyte ssd inside the machine though and this actually gives you more than double the amount compared to the ps5 as that only has 667.2 gigs so you can install way more titles without having to delete any which has been really nice Look, I'm happy this thing exists. I don't play a lot of games on PC. I want the best of the best on console. And while playing, knowing that there is a prettier version of the game out there that you never get to see because you want the 60 FPS, never felt good. And this solves that. Yes, it sucks that we in Europe and other countries have to pay way more than in the US for the same package. But I'm overall happy that Sony made it as an option for people like me who really want it. So if you got questions, drop them in the comments down below. Subscribe, of course, for more coverage on the PlayStation games. A like would be awesome. And check out my previous video by clicking on the screen. Goodbye.